Hi, everyone. Uh, the good news is I'm going to speak a lot slower and use a lot smaller words than our previous speaker. So everyone gets a chance to kind of absorb that fantastic uh, presentation and relax their brains a bit. The bad news is, or maybe not so good news, is that you have to listen to a vendor speak for 10 minutes. So I apologize. Um, now, I can't see my slides here, so if, uh, I'll give it a, a second. But as an introduction, my name is Shane Evans. I'm a career performance tester. I've been in uh, testing and test engineering for about 15 years. So um, this is my first time speaking at Velocity, second time attending, and I have to say this has been the most um, collaborative, the most exciting and energetic group of uh, individuals that I've ever had the experience to, to work with, and I thank you for that. The Ignite sessions on, on Monday, if you didn't get a chance to attend, were amazing, uh, and I, was, I left truly inspired, uh, as I thought I might, but particularly by, by one presenter about uh, getting more young women involved in computer science as a career, which spoke to me as a father of a, a young daughter. So I was particularly surprised when I left the next day and, and went out for my morning walk, and I saw outside of the, the building there was a, a, a small group of individuals holding up uh, signs down with velocity. You may have missed them. They were protesting. Nobody? There's a lot of uh, crazies in New York holding signs, so it's, it's understandable. But I approached them and I asked, what, what, do you, what could you possibly have against these peaceful, loving performance engineers and, and, and developers that just want to make the world, a, a, the web, a faster place? And this lovely young woman in the crocheted cap said to me, but Shane, we're not all bleeding edge companies like Netflix, Facebook, Google, Etsy. Some of us have legacy systems. Some of us have mainframes. I mean, these are really your huddled masses. <laughs> and it got me thinking. And, and I ended up rewriting this entire presentation based on this, this enlightening uh, conversation. How do we do better? How do we bring some of this uh, innovation into the real world for the 99 percenters, if you will? So, in my experience, this is what an application tends to look like. This is, again, a, 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 a simplification rather than a, a real representation of a, an application. But there's all sorts of complexities there, and I, I feel like we spend a lot of time focusing on the front end, on our, on our mobile devices, on our browsers, and we tend to forget that there's a whole lot of things going on behind the scenes that, that we take for granted. Some of it's inside of our, our control, a lot of it's not. But if we're not developing, if we're not testing with true conditions, then, then there's a lot of possibility for failure here. There's a lot of things that could impact performance that I worry that we're not taking into consideration. Things like third-party services. You might have an SLA with a, a, a credit bureau to pull customer data. But when that credit bureau fails, your customers don't care if you have an SLA. They just experience the failure. And likewise, our distributed systems internally to our network and our, our legacy, you know, forbid the, the mainframes and SAP systems, they're still there. In fact, one of the hottest jobs in technology now is COBOL programmer. You can make a lot of money if you brush up on that COBOL. So the question is, how do we account for all this? How do we build our, our applications re in a realistic environment, taking all of this complexity into consideration so that we are designing applications to perform better with that understanding? Well, HP, um, I, I was actually a customer of HP's for a long time before joining in 2009, and they've been a leader in application performance testing and engineering. Uh, and application lifecycle management for over a decade. We don't just make printers, <laughs> although we make darn good printers. <laughs> and we've learned a few things. Um, performance testing is my specialty, um, and I've worked with a lot of customers, a lot of uh, mission-critical applications, and we've, we've taken a lot of that information from our customers and, and 
kind of fed it into, you know, what can we do better? How can we help you achieve uh, faster performing uh, applications for your customers? And there's two things I want to talk about today. So one of them is services. Uh, and service could be anything. It could be, you know, your, what you might consider your, your standard type of web service, or it might be uh, an application service, like a, an SAP backend. And the second is the network. Uh, and I was actually very pleased to hear this week a lot of you talking about how poor network conditions affect our, our end users, but I still get the sense that, that we're considering it in a single user situation. Like how does one user on an edge network, how does he experience our application and how do we improve that? And that's great, but I think it's just one step towards uh, a larger goal. So first, let's look at services. And this can be anything from your third-party uh, paper transaction services that you really can't test against very well, or maybe you can't run a load test against it, so you don't know the, the stress points and how they will impact your, your services that are in front of it. It could be mainframe, SAP, Siebel, an existing database, or some system or component that's not built yet. And as developers, we tend to take the stubbing approach, right? We would just write us a harness that gives us the response we need. And that's fine, except it takes time to, to build these stubs, and it takes time to maintain them, and then somebody has to understand them. And then it's not quite si as simple as we would like to, to take those stubs and pass them along to the testers further down the, the life cycle, which is why we have dev testers who are, are good at doing these things as well. But what we can do is we can virtualize these services. We can understand from what happens in production. We can learn from the real world environment what the services should do, how they should respond. And then we can build in things like positive and negative uh, performance scenarios. What happens if that backend is not performing as it should? If it's a shared environment, we can't depend on it 100% of the time, right? So we can learn and adapt and simulate these services quite easily. Now, you might expect the next slide is, how is HP doing it? <laughs> well, we can give you services that are always available, that support these different scenarios, both positive and negative. You don't have to uh, ask your database developers to query the, the production data and, and give it to you in test environments. This will learn it for you, or you can provide whatever test data you like. It's easy to deploy, and it's significantly lower cost than building and maintaining stubs yourself. A lot less than you would think. So the second area I want to talk about for a moment is network and how the network impacts us. There's a great talk linked here at the bottom. A lot of you have probably seen it, the breaking the one second time to glass mobile barrier. Fantastic presentation. It's an hour long. It goes by in very quickly. But what it talks about is that you know, most of these things we're used to, they, under, they, they respond very quickly, the, especially the ones that are, are within our control. They have high-speed network connections. We've optimized the uh, interconnectivity of, of the systems that are within our, our realm. But as soon as we get outside of that, as soon as we're dealing with third-party service providers, co-location facilities, networks, CDNs, things get a little sketchy because we have all sorts of unknowns in the way. You could be coming in from uh, a 3G network from London to New York, and then suddenly cut over to an edge network, and what happens? Well, the network can occupy as much as 70% of total performance, and it's not just about the single user performance, it's about how those users who are performing poorly or ha have poor network conditions, how do they impact the rest of our users? Because when I, as a user on edge, request resources from your application, I'm tying up resources on your front ends, on your services, that are gonna have a cascading effect to other users. And you'll find that you'll, your applications has significantly higher response times and lower capacity when you introduce realistic network conditions throughout development and testing. So I do need to speed up, but as you might imagine, HP has a solution. We've actually been working with a company called Shunra for uh, over a decade, and we acquired them in April this year. And this 
allows you to uh, capture and introduce realistic network conditions throughout your application development and testing so that you're getting realistic results. We can also give you optimization techniques based on lovely y -slow rules, as well as some additional secret sauce that we've added to that. So it's about isolating application dependencies so that we can understand the impact that they have from network and services, and we can optimize those parts of the, the uh, overall system that we do control, the front end and maybe the distributed systems behind them. So I have to skip my wonderful build slide due to time. But the point here is that, that it's a feedback life cycle. We can capture this information from production, whether it's the services or the network that make up our applications, and we can introduce those into our development life cycle and in through testing so that we're not just building applications based on the assumption that everything's going to be okay. We're, we're optimizing those applications on the assumption that it probably isn't. Thank you very much.